Do you have a Sony camera and have wondered what the Sony Picture Profile stands for and which settings you can change in it or what terms like Gamma, Ni or Color Depth stand for? If so, then take a few minutes to watch this video. I will try to explain to you in a simple way how you can use and customize the Picture Profile. Everything I say today applies equally to the APC models like the A6400 or A6600 as well as the full frame cameras like the A7 III. If you are new here, my name is Werner, I live in the Italian Alps and this channel is about filmmaking tutorials and reviews of consumer cameras. Consider subscribing if you are interested in these topics and have fun with this video. Before I begin, I would just like to clarify a few things. I'm not a professional colorist and in this video I will explain many things in a simplified way, so that everyone can understand. If you want to correct or add something, you are welcome to do so in the comments. You can find the picture profile settings in the camera settings. When you open the picture profile menu, you will find 9 to 10 presets. They are named PP1 to PP10. As already mentioned, these are presets. If you intend to change the settings to suit your needs, it doesn't really matter whether you use PP1 or PP5 for this. The result will be the same. When you have decided which preset to use, you can open the corresponding settings menu. You can change the following settings here. Black level, gamma, black gamma, knee, color mode, saturation, color face, color depth and detail. I would like to begin with the most important setting, the gamma. So what does gamma or the so-called gamma curve stand for? The gamma curve shows the relationship between the input signal level and the output signal level. This means that the camera converts the subject's brightness signal into an electrical signal. This is then sent back to the monitor which converts it back into a brightness signal and displays it as an image. Let's show the whole thing as a curve. Let's assume that a part of your image is rather dark. So the input signal is rather on the left side of your x-axis. The input signal is then converted to an output signal which is then displayed as a dark spot in the image. It is located in our coordinate system, let's say about here. If an area of your image is much brighter, then the input signal is converted into an output signal which is then displayed brighter in the image. We could then display this approximately here. So far everything seems clear and simple. In order for the image to be displayed properly, the ratio between the level of the input signal and the level of the output signal should be more or less proportional. In other words, it should represent a line like this. Unfortunately, CRT monitors do not have such a linear ratio when displaying the image. Rather, these monitors produce such a curve. LCD monitors and OLED monitors have been adapted to the curve of CRT monitors. To counteract this, the camera generates an opposite curve when recording. A video gamma curve therefore looks something like this. The result on the monitor is then again more or less linear. If we now look at the possible settings under gamma, the gamma curve's movie, still and ITU709 correspond most closely to such a standard gamma curve. Movie corresponds to the standard setting for a video recording, still creates the high contrast look of a photo and ITU709 corresponds to the standard for HD televisions. The problem with these standard gamma curves is that the image has a very limited dynamic range. This means that if there are very dark and very bright areas in the same frame, details get lost. If you set your exposure for the dark areas, the bright areas will burn out and no details will be captured. Anything above 100 or 109 on our curve won't have any details, but will be completely burned out. Actually, modern sensors like the one in your Sony camera can capture a much wider dynamic range. To capture more details in the bright areas of the image and thus increase the dynamic range, you can use a different gamma curve. That brings us to S-Log. S-Log is a gamma curve optimized for the dynamic range of the sensor. It can capture much more details in the very bright parts of the image. The gamma curve looks something like this. You can see that for the brighter area an input signal on the x-axis is now converted to an output signal that is now displayed darker than in our previous curve. This allows you to capture details in much brighter areas of the image. Because the gamma curve is now much flatter, this results in an image with much less contrast. The result will look strange and flat. That's why you have to correct it considerably in post. There is also another problem. You squeeze much more dynamic range into the same container. In fact, your S-Log recording does not result in much larger files. S-Log also uses a higher minimum ISO sensitivity. For these reasons, there are significantly more artifacts and noise, especially in the dark areas of the image. Also, the heavy grading required by the flat look can lead to banding, especially since these cameras only have 8-bit color depth. Sony distinguishes between S-Log 2 and S-Log 3. 
where S log3 stands for an even flatter gamma curve. For the mentioned reasons, S log3 is not really recommended for cameras like the A6400 or the Sony A7 III. If by the way, you are interested in the cameras and lenses I would currently recommend for video, take a look at the links in the video description. As far as S log is concerned, you should keep the following in mind. S log requires a heavy grading in post, artifacts and image noise are more likely to occur. In return, you get much more dynamic range. For best results, you should not expose your image the same way as in standard movie mode. Instead, you should overexpose your image. This way, you will get better control of the noise. S-Log is not an optimal tool for every situation, but mainly useful for shots that require a higher dynamic range. That is shots with very bright and very dark areas in the same image. For example, when shooting in low light, so when all areas of your scene are rather dark, you don't need a high dynamic range and the disadvantages of S-Log clearly exceed the advantages. Since S-Log has the mentioned disadvantages, there is also a kind of intermediate solution between the standard gamma curve and S-Log, the Cine gamma curves. Sony cameras have a total of 4 of these, Cine 1, Cine 2, Cine 3 and Cine 4. These curves also have a flatter gradient and therefore lead to more dynamic range. However, they are relatively close to the standard curve. Therefore, the resulting image is also richer in contrast, easier to grade, and there is no heavy image noises with S-Log. HLG gamma curves are also available on the current Sony cameras. With HLG curves, it is possible to record and playback with high dynamic range without having to grade but your monitor and your editing software must support HDR. Even if this should not be the case, you can of course use these gamma curves as they lead to good results overall. Let us now look at the color mode. Here you can choose the color tones or the color space. In simple terms, this is about how colors are displayed and how they are assigned. A color space can basically be larger or smaller. ITU 709 is the standard for HD televisions. It corresponds approximately to the color space sRGB and is of course intended for use with the ITU 709 gamma curve. BT 2020 is actually supposed to be the new standard. This color space is much larger than ITU 709. It is suitable for HDR recordings and is therefore well suited for the HLG gamma curves. As gamut are very large color spaces from Sony that are suitable for S-Log. Pro corresponds to the color spaces of professional Sony camcorders and this mode is therefore particularly suitable if you are recording with such camcorders at the same time. According to Sony, this mode is intended for use in combination with the ITU 709 gamma curve. Cinema creates a slightly desaturated look and is good for the Cine gammas and for easy grading. Of course, you can work with the gamma color combinations that will give you the best results for you personally. Color perception can be very subjective. Now let's move on to the other settings. I hope everything has been clear so far. Personally, I believe that for understanding the picture profiles, the gamma curve is by far the most important setting. I will therefore go into the other settings a little more briefly. Black level. Here you can set the black level, which is basically the brightness of the darkest area of the image. A positive value leads to a faded look. Black then appears more like a dark grey. A negative value, on the other hand, emphasizes the black tones and gives them more punch. Black gamma. With this value, you can change the shape of the gamma curve in the dark areas. With range, you can set how large the range you want to adjust should be. Narrow stands for a small range close to black. With white, on the other hand, you change a larger range of the curve. A positive value increases the brightness, a negative value results in a darker image, always related to the area of the curve that is adjusted. Knee. Here you can adjust the gamma curve in the bright areas. The goal should always be to avoid overexposure. You can select an automatic function for the knee point, which is the point at which the curve becomes flatter, or you can adjust it completely manually. In the manual settings, you can also determine how steep the curve should continue. This section is also called slope. Saturation stands for the saturation of the colors and does not need to be explained further here. With color phase, you can adjust the color U. This changes all colors. A positive value turns the color wheel towards red, a negative value towards green. Color depth. Here you can adjust the luminance of the individual color channels, similar to a photo editing software like Lightroom. A positive value decreases the luminance of the individual color channel, a negative value increases the luminance. For example, if you increase the value for red, the color looks darker and deeper. If you decrease the value, the color appears lighter and softer. Detail. Finally, a very important setting. With detail, you can basically adjust the sharpness. It is not about whether more or less details are visible in the picture. 
rather the edges in the image are artificially emphasized. This makes the image appear sharper. For video recordings, I would rather recommend a negative value. The image looks more cinematic and if you really need it, you can sharpen your image in post. So let's recap the most important points. Under Picture Profile, you will find a number of presets that you can adjust to your own taste. The most important setting is the gamma or gamma curve. This curve represents the relationship between the input signal and the video output signal. A standard gamma curve results in recordings with a very limited dynamic range. The gamma curves S-Log, HLG and Cine lead to a higher dynamic range. However, the shots have to be graded. Gamma curves such as S-Log only make sense if a higher dynamic range is required, because they also have disadvantages, such as image noise or extensive grading. In addition, the image should be exposed in a different way for optimal results. And that's it for today. If the video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback and see you next time.